uh, the concept here, and I think thoughts is, man, this has been a tough, a tough go for so many people. Um, so not to make light of the situation at all, but but to really look at it from working with our athletes, working with our clients, like like what are some opportunities? Obviously, we've seen competition is you know gone away for a majority of the high school athletes, certainly most of the college athlete in, in most of the country. Um, you see in the professional sports kind of kind of trickling themselves back in throughout the summer and into the fall here, which is which has been great to see. But we're also seeing some some problems that have emerged because of the timing of that and maybe some lack of preparation. So what should our athletes and clients be considering as as maybe we don't know when their next competitive season starts? You know, it could be in a month. It could be in six months. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think we all recognize that one day they're going to get the call, which is going to be very difficult to predict that, hey, like, let's, uh, we're going to be back on the field next week. You know, it's time to go. And, and we're seeing that through college football right now. There's talk of like, hey, let's get back out there and go. And, you know, what should, what can athletes be doing now to help prepare them for, for that situation, no matter what their, what their level might be? I feel like for me, if I was in that situation, it would definitely be identifying what I maybe wasn't good at. And maybe if you don't feel like you can come up with that answer as a young athlete, um, your coaches are still there to have conversations with. Okay, were some things you identified in my play that you know I could be better at? Was it, you know, do I need to get more explosive? Do I need to practice the mental game a little bit more? Like help steer or help have someone help you steer your efforts during this time to prepare you even more for when you start. That's where I would start. When there's kind of two components here, right? There's the development side where if you know you've got a long time off, then we can work on that type of development. But then there's the other side to this coin where a lot of these guys are in limbo and they don't necessarily know when they're going to get this call. So we've had this group of pro um, baseball guys in one of our facilities that have been essentially in limbo since they got sent home from swimming training in March. So this is the group that wasn't playing at the major league level and wasn't on the taxi squad. This is the next group that have been you know, kind of being told we might need you, we might not. So they don't really get a chance to go through that full off season. And now they are, they, well, some of them did just get called um, into these kind of like mini camps are going to do. It's going to be like 25 to 30 games this fall. And, you know, some of them were probably well prepared neurologically and physiologically for that. And some of them probably weren't. So again, I think there's kind of two sides. It's like preparing for the unknown and then kind of like dominating a longer off season. So you gotta go two ways. It's like, yeah, it's like the longest preseason of all time, right? right? I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, I don't know when this preseason is going to end, right? Which is, I think most athletes like, are like excited about preseason, but when you don't have a date that you're going to get started, it's like, man, that's a lot of work, you know? I know in, in training athletes, I think this is an important concept and, and a super basic concept of periodization and, and programming. But uh, one opportunity for me that, that was really tremendous, I got to work with, with an athlete, uh, Stephanie Brown Trafton. She was a uh, discus thrower for the U.S. I started with her back in 2006, and we worked together through 2016 through the Rio Olympics. Uh, Three-time Olympian, gold medalist in 2008, and then we went back to the uh, the Olympics in 2012, and she did very well. But th when, we, when we transitioned from working with her in 2006 to 2008, we really put together a plan that was a full-year programming session of of looking at basically the year and quarters or in meso cycles for that matter and saying, you know, what are we going to focus on? So having an off season, having a preseason, having an in season and having a, having a post season. And I think a lot of our success, and she would tell you this as well as, as we finished up the year of 2006, 2007, prepared for the Olympic year of 2008, we started training for that year in, in late September, early October to prepare for the August Olympics. Right. And in doing so during that off season and preseason, uh, certainly the off season through the, through the winter, was a tremendous amount of strength conditioning and foundational building work. And then going in, that really prepared to go into preseason where she did more Olympic lifting, more power-based work and move towards more explosive movements so that in season we could really maintain the level of intensity that we were working at as opposed to um, dropping that down. Because she was in such good condition, we could maintain that through her season, which allowed her to perform at, a, at, at the highest level in her sport, which is was tremendous. And I think that if you, she looks back at that time and says, you know, why was, why were we able to be successful and, and do that so well? And one of the biggest factors was, you know, we started in September and we did all this off season work. And I think that's, what's put out in front of us right now. I think that for, for high school baseball, I think we could probably say that you're probably not going to have a great fall ball season, right? It's not likely that we're going to be seeing competitive games in the fall. Uh, people are going to sneak in some showcases and stuff, which I think might be the most dangerous thing to do in, in your yeah. history of your career at this point, being that you've had really probably no work most of the summer. 
And then, so you can kind of think that the probably first time you're going to play is probably going to be maybe late January, February at best. So you're really like in the off season a little bit earlier than usually would be because usually be in fall ball. So you can start off season work now, really build that foundation is what I would suggest. And then as you get into late December, January, you're starting to work more towards your preseason work, assuming that that things change and we're, we're going to start to anticipate playing. But I, I think that'd be the next chance you have to, have to prepare for it.